All right, welcome back to the table, everyone. Today, we're going to take a look at the Cthulhu Death May Die expansion and the Unspeakable Box. Now, this was the expansion that came from the Kickstarter that I was into, and I don't remember, I don't think this is a Kickstarter exclusive, and I don't remember if I had to pay extra for this expansion or if this was what you got with the Kickstarter, um, but we've got it. Let's take a look at it. I've gone ahead and kind of pre-cut the plastic. So this would be my first time looking at it. So, just like the other unboxing I did for the Death May Die uh, opening box cord set, I don't know anything about the game. I mean, I know it's a Cthulhu investigation game, but I don't know the mechanics. So this is just simply, hey, enjoy the excitement of looking at this with me. Oh, here we go. Looks like a whole new cast of characters. It looks like Al Capone, Albert Einstein. But beyond that, no clue who those other people may be representing. Oh, two new bosses, Dagon and yogg Sothoth. Oh, wow. Okay, I can't wait to open these. Now, from the base game, I know right away that this will have at least the miniature of the, the big boss here. And then sometimes if they have any associated minions. So we'll take a look at those in a moment. This here, Happy Birthday, Lost Episode 3. So this maybe is a one-shot adventure. Very awesome. This will have everything you need to tell you like what map tiles to play, all the, the cards for special events. Everything you need will be contained in this one box, which is awesome. And I see a trader. Oh, man. No, no traders. Uh, here's some more characters, which probably are all the folks on the cover there. So we'll open that up. Yeah, we'll take a look here. This is very exciting. So already you have, um, you know, the base game, which has a lot of stuff in it. And then you add this expansion and my goodness, you got a lot of things. The only thing is, again, not having learned the mechanics yet, I don't know how much you can intermingle or how easy it is to make like your own scenarios. I guess it wouldn't be that hard. We'd have to make a lot of, you know, your own episode components. So I'm hoping, hoping people will create their own stuff or hopefully the, the cool mini or not they just keep pumping out episodes this is oh this is a lot of people holy cow I thought the core box had a, a lot of people but uh, we've got Julia keep calm and aim for the eyes and of course she'll have her story on the back which I'm not going to read to you Al Capone probably I let him think the scars from some mook that slashed me in Brooklyn the scars are from Cthulhu Minions. Yep, Al Capone, Chicago. Richard, I'm a licensed troubleshooter. Or something. In his story, Richard Irons of London, England. One second here. I forgot to take a drink between film and videos. What am I drinking today, you might ask? It's a... Uh, a nice vintage Pepsi wild cherry. I don't want to tip it, otherwise it'll spill all over. Zero sugar version. Not a product plug because they don't pay me. I just like to share the joy of drinking. Here's Olivia. I'm thinking Amelia Earhart kind of character. I swear, I thought that would miss. Olivia Ducamp, Portsmouth, England. Maki, range targets are too easy. I like hitting things on the run, really. Nice. Vintage schoolgirl cheerleader outfit. Maki Smith of Mobile, Alabama. Mobile, Alabama. Range targets are too easy. Oh, I already read that. Then we have Tina. I don't go looking for trouble. It finds me without any help. Tina McShane of Belfast, Northern Ireland. Fleur, the Great War saw more action, though it was less horrific. And that's Fleur de Bois of Troy, France. Or Troyer, I don't know how to speak French, sorry. Ernest Hemingway, don't tell me I'm here. I'll ask, my, I'll ask myself for copies of my future work. Don't tell me I'm here. Okay. Yep, Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> that's so cool. Anywhere away from himself. All right. So you got some historical fun people. Yeah, Bert, that's got to be Albert Einstein, right? The Colts would experience more success if they understood mathematics. No one tell them that. From Geneva, Switzerland. Then Maxim, 
if a man asks for a fight, who is to blame if he blah, 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 blah. if a man asks for a fight, who is to blame if he is himself destroyed? Maxim Gray of Cape Town, South Africa. Then we got Roxy. I'd rather be writing, but if you don't just ignore this kind of source material. Roxy Mitchell Williams of Harlem, New York, with a nice big machine gun there. Then we got Margie. My dear, if you go on cowering, you'll miss our triumph. Marjorie Westmoreland, a Dowager Countess of Devon, England. Cool. Meryl, I prefer the stage, but moving pictures offer a wider venue. Is it Meryl Streep? Nope. Meryl Starling, Hollywood, California. Pops, remember that death himself may die. I'm thinking Louisiana. Yep, Pops Duperon, Avaco Island, Louisiana. Walter, tag your prey and let it lead you back to its lair. Walter Baggett, Juba Sedan. Vincent, yes, exactly like that. Now, you may destroy them at will. Professor Vincent Haas, Antwerp, Belgium. Then we got Gonk. Efficiency, economy, and a keen sense of timing separates us from the chaos. From Marcello Gonk, Gonk, Salvador, Brazil. Then finally, Josephine. What good is money if there is no world to spend it in? That's Josephine Leclerc of Paris, France. That is a lot more investigators than we had in the course set. So there's your replayability right there. Uh, trust me, from... I, I hate to say similar games, but I've played some other Cthulhu games that have lots of investigators, and a lot of your differences are going to be here in how they develop. And let me tell you, just changing out one or two investigators can totally change the way the game plays so even if you're playing the same episodes over and over they're gonna be a lot different I mean obviously you know the story and possibly the outcome but how you get there is gonna be different okay so let's see what we've got here um I'm gonna guess maybe trays to hold your Character card? Let me see. Maybe... Oh, yeah. Okay. I guess if you... There's kind of stack. You just hold it just right. It's going to take me a second to figure out how this is supposed to fit over your character. But it does look like your character kind of fits like so. And then look here. Boom. You got spots here to hold your counters, trackers. That way if you sneeze or something, hopefully it doesn't go shooting all over the place and your pieces go everywhere. I'm just trying to figure out, they don't really lock in, oh, hold on. No, they don't. <laughs> uh, I think you just gotta be careful. It's really hard to show you here, but they're gonna fit. So as long as you're careful and don't bump stuff too much, uh, it, it won't be too troubling to just kind of realign it back up. But that's actually kind of cool. I really appreciate the fact that they made an extra little doohickey to enhance your playing experience. Uh, I'm sure once I figure out how to make them sit in there properly and how, how the, you know, your character locked in place, that's actually really cool. Um, I know me, I like to spill sodas and drinks and stuff, so having a little protection and something to hold the marker so they aren't sliding all over. Excellent, that's a plus. Here we go, here, just a little hacking assistant. Here's the figures. Now, uh, it looks like this, okay, first of all, let me grab the tape. They. Cool me or not, they package this stuff so well that I'm trying to do this without ruining stuff too much. Okay. I should just cut the tape. Alright, so, so far, other than maybe what creatures you get with your bosses here, uh, this is all investigators. So that's great. 
again, uh, this is a huge selection of people to play with. And I guarantee you'll probably end up playing each, each episode maybe a couple different times trying to figure out which investigators you like. I know with, um, I'm trying not to name other games, but there's another Cthulhu game that we play. And when we play, there's like four, four investigators that we love to play with. It's like, okay, I'm this person, you're this person, you're that person, you know, everybody has their character. And so just playing enough times to find your favorite character is going to be fun in itself. But they're all in here really great. So I'm just going to put that back in there carefully. Okay, this is Speak, Speak, Tagen, or Die. So this is Lost Episode 1, Lost Episode 2, Lost Episode 3, Happy Birthday. That's pretty small. So what is in this? Why is this bigger? Oh, because this has the figures necessary to make that work. Oh, cool. Ice cream vendor and the citizens. Nice. Nothing like creepy ice cream to uh, really set the mood. So let's take a look at one of these enhanced episode boxes. I'm going to call that enhanced. Because your normal episode box is like this thin doohickey. The enhanced episode box includes your figures. In addition to your cardboard and other parts. Speaking of your cardboard, here you go. Here's your cardboard, your people who get all trippy after eating the trippy ice cream, apparently. Oh, there it is. Order ice cream. So there's some cards that uh, talk about how to set up. And this is going to be everything from the core box. I did not see any other cardboard in here for making additional locations. So everything you need is from the base box. And then how to set out your characters, or rather the NPCs and players you'll encounter, minions and whatnot. Here's the cultists you'll encounter. And then the cards specific to that scenario. So uh, here, these ones, we're not going to open these, but oh, there's some, a couple more cultist figures right there. There's the three figures. Yep, that's it. So there's the three you get. And then all of this is these discovery cards. I'm not going to open them. But uh, these are all... Sp yeah, I will. Why not? We're looking at this. Let's open it up. I won't on the other episodes because I don't want too many spoilers. I mean, I want to give you an idea of what's in here. But at the same time... I don't want to spoil it for those that want to be completely surprised. But here is a sampling. There's an oil can, a quick game of catch, has a baseball glove, and little Timmy, milk, uh, the companion, you got the milkman, baseball bat. So a lot of kids in this one. Hopefully you're okay with kids getting all Cthulhuized. Ruth, there's the Ford Model A, a guitar. Propaganda, a vaccine, earmuffs, more vaccine, lessons from the cinema, the American dream, and bloating. Nice. And then back to oil can. So there you go. Each of these are going to come with items specific to that episode. And again, that's why I was wondering, you know, what it would take to make your own episodes and like mix and match all of these items. I don't know if you do that, like if you end up with a stack of, you know, cards like that and you have so many things you can draw from or if these are very specific to this episode. I mean, it does actually say what episode it belongs to, but that would be cool if you could mix and match stuff. All right, so let's put that back in there. I'm going to try and put it all in there gently according to how it may or may not fit. All right, so that's an episode. So again, I'm not going to open the other episodes because I don't want to give out too many spoiler things. But just so you understand what we've got, we have two of the large episode boxes to include the figures needed. One normal sized episode box for the happy birthday episode. And then here, we're going to take a look at Yog Sathoth. So here comes Yog. Let's move this. In fact, why don't we go ahead and just bring the camera in a bit. There we go. Should have done that with the other figures. So here we've got the top. That's not taped. 
but the inner box is always taped. Okay, so Yog Sithoth comes with his Mythos cards. Again, no spoilers, but just know this has got all the information to run or about Yog Sithoth. Here's Yog Sithoth specific tokens. Here's Yog Sithoth specific. Uh, stages of development. So this is how he runs when he's in stage one or stage two, stage three, and then his final stage. And then it's got his minion information. So, and then the creepy artwork. Speaking of creepy artwork, here is the creepy figure. I'm just going to cut the tape. I'm so, I keep tearing it, but it feels like just cut the tape would be easier. So first minion you have looks like the weird looking guy from the first Clash of the Titans movie. You know what I'm talking about if you've seen the first Clash of the Titans, 1970 something version, early 80s version. Anyway, that's who that reminds me of. Then, oh who that's supposed to be really, I don't know. But here's Yogg Sothoth. Once again, creepy. Nothing like mouths with teeth and then tentacles and arms coming out of the mouth. Yeah, that's just always uh, a nice... Oh, there's a mouth right in the middle. Yeah, this thing is... Yeah, that's, that's bad. Again, I can't wait to see somebody paint this for me. Whew. He's got a creepy head-looking thing here. And I'm trying to find that on the figure, but if it... It's a really small head. It's kind of hard to see for this huge, grotesque body. Nice. All right, thanks for that image. So let's see if we can fit all this in here proper. I don't, I don't know. I'm just gonna hope this goes in like this. There's a little recess in there. I should have put, you know, if I do like this, that fits and then if I do these on the back boom Yog Sothoth and I hope that's how you're supposed to say that all right let me grab Dagon here so Yog Sothoth and then last one that we'll look at thank you for hanging out with me while we take a look at all the cool stuff in here really appreciate it all right, here's Dagon. So, of course, they all open different. Well, here's what you get. Transformation tokens. Three Servants of the Deep. Oh, Servants of the Deep. I got something else that calls them deep ones. I guess that's the same thing. And, of course, you got Dagon. Dagon it. His stage cards and his mythos cards. And then the minions card. Again, I'm not going to show you those mythos cards and minion cards. Because... Spoilers, but here's your cardboard. There's your transformation tokens, and I'm sure the whatever episode has him will explain how to use those properly. There's his cards. There's his stage of development cards, and then that's what you really want to see. Thank you for packaging everything so well. All right, here we go. Now let's try this again. What? Look at that thing. Oh, that is cool. Oh, man, I love that. Oh, man, that is significantly creepier than I thought. Yeah. Now, if I was, like, really good at modeling, I'd be filling these gaps with putty then we'd base coat it and slime coat it and do all kinds of stuff. So I'm hoping someone can paint that really nice for me. Here's your Servants of the Deep. Again, the little fish people, fish lizardy people. You got three of them. So there's the figures for Dagon. And then, of course, all his supporting cards and tokens and documents. So we'll just stick that back on there. All this fit in right here. So you got his Mythos cards, his... AI cards for different stages of development and then the transformation tokens for whoever is being transformed but I think yeah I think that just went on right there and that will slide back in the box 
And that's it. That is everything, which is still quite a bit. That expansion alone, I'm guessing that's going to add, that adds a lot to your game. It really does. Okay, cool. So I can see we're going to be playing this for a long time. Boom, there it is. Then we have the really cool covers for your character sheets. You had this little help hold it in place thing. Slide that over. And then, I mean, so many new investigators with appropriate miniature for each one. And that to me is what's real impressive. Is you get a specific miniature for each investigator. That is so cool. That's, that's it. I did forget to put these cards back in the original box, so I'll have to do that. But that's everything that comes in this. This is the unspeakable box for Cthulhu Death May Die. And we'll just stick that right back on there. And again, thank you for sharing in the joy of opening this. I'm looking at this and this cover picture here, I can see these lines of wrinklage or whatever. It kind of reminds me of an old actual oil painted painting where over time it starts to crack and wear. So that's a very, very clever picture. Whoever did this, great artwork. And that's it. Again, thank you so much for, you know, sitting with me, opening the box with me, and seeing all the really cool stuff that you now have to expand your Cthulhu Death May Die game. Uh, again, leave your thoughts. Do you have it? Is this something you wanted? Have you played it? What did you think? Just go ahead and share, and I'll be happy to read all the comments. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.